The Kandil Mountains of northern Iraq serve as a rear base for the PKK, Turkey's Kurdish guerrilla fighters. Turkish planes regularly cross the border to bomb Kurdish rebel positions in Iraq, leading at times to collateral damage. Early August, eight residents were killed in this village. They bombed twice. The first time they targeted this house. And this old woman fell as a martyr. Then they hid the villagers coming to help her. They say they killed members of the PKK, but all the victims were civilians. May God punish Turkey. My child is crying all the time. May God avenge my daughter. They took her father. They took her future. Today, Zargali is a ghost village. These two men briefly venture out to pick nuts. Marhaba. But a Turkish drone flies overhead. We shouldn't stay here. The Kurdistan Workers' Party, or PKK, has been fighting the Turkish government since 1984. Classified as a terrorist group by the United States and the European Union, the guerrillas demand autonomy for the Kurds, 40 million people spread out across Turkey, Iraq, Syria, and Iran. After two and a half years of negotiations, Ankara declared total war once again against the underground party. It's impossible to continue the peace process with those who threaten our national unity and security. Abdullah Ocalan, the PKK's charismatic leader, has been behind bars in Turkey for the last 16 years. But deep in the Kandil Mountains, his lieutenants continue to plan operations. The fighters here are wary of electronic appliances. Before going in to meet their leaders, our phones are deactivated. These appliances put out a signal, and our enemies can locate them. We're doing this for your safety. If they get wind that you're here to contact the fighters, they won't hesitate to bomb us and sacrifice you. We're taken to a secret location where a woman greets us. Bese Hozat is number two in the PKK after Abdullah Ocalan. The group calls itself socialist and secular and says it makes no distinction for gender. At every level, a man and a woman lead together. The PKK without women wouldn't be the PKK. It's a party based on freedom and equality between men and women. To solve the Kurdish conundrum, the PKK favors local democracy. Our model rejects nationalism, religious intolerance, racism, centralism. We're not in favor of an authoritarian project. Our objective is for all groups to protect themselves, for them to be the real power holders. The PKK says it seeks to liberate all groups of people in the Middle East. 
Our party isn't fighting for Kurdish freedom. We've already outgrown that mission. In this region, we're defending humanity, all people, all ethnicities, and all beliefs. They'll live together as friends and brothers, and they'll govern themselves. What was that, comrade? Uh. We should go. Further up in the mountains, PKK fighters are training for combat. We're in commando training and physical training. If there's an attack, we'll be ready. They're gearing up to fight on two fronts, in Turkey against the Turkish army, but also in Iraq against the Islamic State group. They accuse Ankara of being allied with the jihadists. Erdogan's party is the one that helped the Islamic State group the most. In fact, the press published documents that prove it. Turkey sends weapons and logistics to the Islamic State group. We all know this government has helped them. We always change our hideouts to avoid getting picked up by the drone's radar. Sometimes we stay hidden in the same place, but it's better to move. Under the trees it's safer. The planes can't see us. Between two training sessions, rebels study Abdullah Ocalan's theories. So what makes nature so important for our fighters? Since the time of our ancestors, the Kurds have always lived in the mountains. Nature is like a mother to us. So the guerrilla protects nature, and nature protects the guerrilla. <laughs> the majority of these militants took up weapons in Kurdish regions in southern Turkey. In every family, there's a father, a brother, a mother, or an uncle who's been assassinated. You can ask the comrades, they all feel hatred for the Turkish state. Others come from Iraq, Syria, and even Iran. The Iranian regime has a policy of forcing Kurds to assimilate. There's torture and public hangings. We have no political rights, so I join the movement. To fire in the air, you have to take this position. You can bring down a plane this way. How do we buy weapons? <laughs> Actually, it's the people that help us. And when we're in a combat zone, we take the enemy's weapons. The sources of funding for the PKK are opaque. In Kurdish regions and throughout the diaspora, it levies a revolutionary tax. Some accuse it of drug trafficking. In 30 years, 20,000 men and women from the PKK have died in combat. The PKK idolized their martyrs, their personal belongings are on display in mausoleums in their honor.
And since the fighting began against the Islamic State group, new tombs keep appearing. Two hundred fifty kilometers to the west, in the city of Sinjar, at the foot of the mountain, they're in daily combat with the jihadists. From here, we can see the Islamic State group's positions. Ruken, who is just 26 years old, joined the PKK to fight the Turkish army. For the last year, she's been fighting on the front line against the Islamic State organization. They're on that hill, over there. It's psychological pressure. They cry Allah Akbar and they fire mortars. It's nothing. They're firing randomly. We're used to that now. Come, let's go. Hurry up. They're bombing. That is under the Islamic State group's control. They have heavy weaponry. That's a 12-7. When you get up, stay low. It's dangerous here. Stay low. They're a hundred meters away, 60 meters maybe, close by. Here alone, they've sent in five or six car bombs. Everything has been destroyed, but we pushed back their attacks. Once I could see them down the street, they were well armed, they had big beards, they looked like barbarians. I took my time aiming, I fired, one of them fell instantly. Those are sniper shots. The wounded are taken to safety at the top of the Sinjar Mountains in a makeshift hospital. He was hit by a sniper. A bullet went through his arm. It's okay, it's not that bad. Turkey has done everything it could to make the PKK guerrillas look like a terrorist group to the entire world. 
But if we're terrorists, why are we fighting the Islamic State group? The nurse, who is from Norway but of Kurdish origin, has come here to treat fighters wounded in Iraq. I came back to help them. As long as my people need me, I'll continue to do it on a voluntary basis. I'm hardly wounded. There's no need to send me to hospital. An IV, I'll be fine. Tomorrow I'll have recovered. No, your bones are broken. Algert is taken to a Syrian hospital. He was lucky. That same day, another fighter lost both his legs when a mine exploded under him. Fighting for the PKK is a beautiful thing. We don't really think about fear. When my comrades are wounded or killed next to me, I cling on to life even more. American warplanes often bomb the Islamic State group in the plains. Agit, the local PKK leader, says he has no contact with the international coalition. No one came to ask us what the PKK was doing in Sinjar, how we were working and what our projects were. Here, the West favors the Peshmergas, the Iraqi Kurdish soldiers that can be seen in the distance on that pickup truck. Their leader, Masoud Barzani, is the president of the autonomous region of Iraqi Kurdistan. His Peshmerga fighters are armed by the West. The PKK wants military support too. Europe, Germany, France, the US, they've all sent a lot of weapons, but we haven't seen any of them. And yet we're the ones on the front line. So let them come and see with their own eyes the weapons we're using to fight. Faced with the jihadists' mortars, the PKK has mostly light weaponry. I hope there's no one outside. Looks like they're changing their firing schedule. Have they fired a lot today? I swear they're bombing left and right. As the Islamic State group bombs the area, the PKK stay hidden. <laughs> that one didn't fall very far. Look, there's still smoke. <laughs> There are few rewards for being a PKK fighter. They're not paid and are expected to give up their private lives. My people are in the hands of the enemy. They're killing Kurds while I'm supposed to get married and have children? That's not a life. Having a house, a car, building a family, that's not important for us. Our family is the Kurdish people. There are millions of us. My parents know where I am, and they're proud. All these houses used to belong to Yazidis. The Yazidis are a non-Muslim Kurdish minority. In the eyes of the Islamic State group, they're non-believers. Sinjar was the Yazidi capital. Its residents fled the town when it was taken over by the IS organization last year. Many houses have been taken over by IS fighters. Most of the city is still in their hands. Historically, the PKK wasn't present in the Sinjar mountains. But in August 2014, jihadists surrounded the strategic area 
on the Syrian border. The Yazidi people were trapped. PKK units were sent to rescue them. We don't just defend Kurds in Turkey, we defend all groups in Kurdistan, including in Sinjar. The Islamic State group wanted to massacre our people, so we didn't ask ourselves if they were Turkish Kurds or Iraqi Kurds. We won't leave the region until we've freed our people. In 2014, the plight of the Yazidis touched hearts around the world. In just a few days, some 300,000 people fled the region. The weakest died in the desert, and thousands of women and girls were kidnapped to be forced into marriage with jihadist fighters. Today, just 15,000 residents remain in the Sinjar Mountains. They live in camps protected and provided for by the PKK. It makes a fertile recruiting ground for their cause. The Islamic State group is there now, in the city of Sinjar, in our home. They beheaded people, kidnapped our children, committed massacres, a litany of horrors. In my village they killed and kidnapped many Yazidis. The PKK were the only ones who helped us. God, of course, first, and then the PKK. There are no humanitarian aid groups here. The only medical dispensary is run by a party doctor. People are extremely traumatized. They smoke a lot. They are stressed, anxious. In many families, women have been raped. Some are still being held by the Islamic State group. So we try to restore their hope. We promise them we'll liberate Sinjar, that they'll get their dignity back and be able to defend themselves. I've completely forgotten. At the time of the massacres, no one protected the Yazidis. Now, the PKK is training civilians to fight. If the enemy returns, I'll know how to defend myself. All this we learned from the PKK. When they came to rescue us, they showed us how to use weapons. They taught us how to read and write, and about their ideology as well. They want us to become civil servants, professors, politicians. Nejla is 11 years old. If we had known how to fight, we wouldn't have been kidnapped by the Islamic State group. Now I want to avenge my people. She's wearing a military uniform because she wants to, that's all. When they're younger than 18, they don't go fight. Anyway, we have enough young people ready to go to battle. To all intents and purposes, the PKK is training a Yazidi militia. Its rituals and structure are copied from the PKK. The Yazidis are a Kurdish religious community whose faith is linked to Zoroastrianism, which originated in pre-Islamic Iran. They've been persecuted for centuries. 
There have been 73 massacres carried out against our people. They always try to exterminate us. Now the Yazidis have an army, an ideology, and a desire for revenge. Among my friends and neighbors, they took an entire family. They beheaded the father and kept the wife and children. We paid a ransom and were able to free the mother and her daughters. But they kept the sons, indoctrinated them. Now they use them as child soldiers. Women were the Islamic State group's first victims. The PKK decided to set up a female Yazidi unit. Soon, these women will be at the front. Our Yazidi youth is proud of its new army, and morale is high. They have many friends and family members that are in jihadist hands, and they will free them. They want revenge. <laughs> Hundreds of kilometers away from its historical stronghold, the PKK is grooming relations with the Yazidis. But it's creating tension with the government in Iraqi Kurdistan and its army, the Peshmergas. They're not happy with the PKK and the spread of its ideas. As a member of NATO, Turkey is an ally of the West, which refuses to remove the PKK from its list of terrorist groups. Its opponents accused the PKK of forming an alliance with Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad, trying to set up a sectarian regime and training child soldiers. Be that as it may, the PKK continues to be respected by millions of Kurds and remains an impressive fighting force.